She later studied at Newcomb College Art School and Edgar Whitney New, uh, of New York and other nationally known painters. At ease with watercolor and acrylic, Jackie interprets her experiences with nature in landscape, portraits, abstracts, and florals. She has been an active member of the West Bay Guard Guild, New Orleans Art Association, Louisiana Watercolor Society, of which she has served as chairman in the New Orleans region. She also conducts classes in techniques of painting and drawing for children and adults. Jackie has a two artist exhibit at the Driftwood Cove Gallery in the Bucaray and six one artist shows, one, one of them at the New Orleans Public Library Gallery. By invitation, her work was included in a museum in Lily, France? Leo, France. She has presented painting demonstrations and lectures for art clubs, social organizations, and schools. Earlier in her career, Jackie worked as staff artist for educational television and several newspapers in the metro New Orleans area. Jackie's work is much of it award-winning, hangs in private collections throughout the United States and in Europe. I'm very glad to have you, Jackie. I'm past president of this organization. I started, <coughs> as far as I remember, in 1968, when we were associated with Nord. We were at the Brechtel Park, and uh, it was in the gym where we were on the stage with a, an elderly gentleman who was hired by Nord to be our teacher. And we grew from that into uh, an organization where uh, we had our meetings at the West Bank uh, Regional Library on holiday. Darlene Johnson's husband, Larry, had us in his all-state office. We went from place to place without a real place to be. Well, it's an honor to be with you all tonight, and thank you very much for inviting me to do this. I teach at the People Program now. I paint a lot, almost every day. Um, my, my, my favorite painting will be in watercolor, but I teach acrylics and uh, my husband teaches drawing. My husband was, the, was one of three artists in the United States who was asked by NASA to do the portraits of the astronauts for Apollo program. There were only three people in the United States asked to do that, and he is one of them. So it's a household of artists. I have four sons who are all artists and all award-winning artists. However, they have good jobs like judges and lawyers. <laughs> <laughs> because I don't know anybody but a few people who can make a living at art. I'm going to do a tiny little, what we call it, thumbnail. And I'm going to use this just as an original drawing pen and ink that I did. I'm going to use that as my thumbnail. And um, I have in my pocket some yellow ochre. Jack, can you come? What? Why don't you come around? If you all would like to, we'll get a little bit. This is going to be. Um, Pull your chairs up if you want. This is going to be a thumbnail of the same piece of work. This will be a thumbnail of the same piece of idea of work. And this is what I love, what Louisiana scenes. Uh, one of my favorite places to paint was on Bayou La Forge and at Pierre Park, Louisiana. If anybody's ever been to Chair Park, you won't forget it. It's a lovely place. And um, it's very, very stable. Now this is all I would do as a sketch. It's yellow ochre. It will blend into every color that I use. Now I'm using a combination of paints. My favorite brand is Windsor Newton. But recently I was introduced to Southern Jay watercolors. And they're made with honey and they're very rich. And they're very strong. It's the name It's made in France. And this is the this is the palette the impressionists use. And I'm a great big fan of the impressionists. 
Now this is going to be a sketch of a thumbnail of what I plan to do. Why would I do a thumbnail? Well, it sort of sets in my mind where I want to go with that. It's, it's really just a sketch, but it sort of sets in a person's mind where they want to go with that sketch, what do you want to say with that. So we're saying sunrise or sunset with that. And we're going to reflect it in the water. And we're going to go with just color to do reflections. And I love trees, particularly oak trees. I was visiting with my sister in Maryland, and I missed oak trees. Like, I can't even begin to tell you how much I missed seeing oak trees. Now, I never thought, and Cajun names, like Woodrow, and <laughs> wonderful Cajun names, and how did I, I never thought I would miss Cajun names. In, in Maryland, it's all Polish names and British names, <laughs> and I felt very with missing our culture and our greatly giant oak trees because they don't have that in Maryland on the East Coast. Now maybe as far south as like the Carolinas you might find oak trees, but they're not like our oak trees, they're just oak trees. Now this is a this is a sketch, remember this is to set my mind for what I want to do. And um, I want to decide where my light is going to be. And I don't know why the light always shines for me from this direction. I don't know why. Because you're right-handed. Because I'm right-handed. That's a really good thing. <laughs> she was left at with five on the other side, right? Yeah, I guess it would. And, and this is a ground, which will be hit by sunlight. So I'm just setting up some light patterns, okay? And this will be some nice green grass. If you see these sun on their colors, they're very strong and powerful and brilliant. And I've never I've never used these before, but they were given to me by David's art. And um, I just love them. And just these three colors, I can make any color you can imagine. Even beautiful lavenders, which is very rare. That you can make lavenders. <coughs> I'm going to make the earth yellow as a to show that the sunlight is shining there. So this is your study, right? Yeah. This is this is a your little study. Mm -hmm. It's a study. It's a, a thumbnail. It's to set my mind to be able to think of where I want what I want the subject matter, what I want it to look like. Okay, but well, that's enough, and I'll give it to somebody, some lucky person, and have them. <laughs> but they'll have to have a lot more detail put into it. Okay, so now I'm going to go back to my yellow ochre, and I want my painting divided in basically thirds. Jackie, are you working uh, wet and wet or wet and wet? I wet the paper while we were getting set up, uh, and I wet portions of the paper because I don't want it to be totally 100% wet. Mm -hmm. When I was studying with Whitney, we would wet the front and the back of every piece, and my son has some of my work framed like that. And I'll tell you, the first one I did with Whitney, he looked at that and he said, Jackie, that's a wonderful place to get murdered in. It was a swamp <laughs> and it was wet back and front, and the, and the color just blurred all over the place. It, because I had studied watercolor when I was much younger, but it was always controlled on dry paper. And that is a big, big difference in attitude of dry paper versus very wet paper. And, and he, he wet the back and the front with a sponge, and that was wet paper. And you put strong, fresh paint into that it, it's a challenge to control. It's a real challenge. So I love greens, and I, I spend my lifetime telling students not to use tube greens, but to mix your own greens. 
and to get lots and lots of color in the green. Anybody here who's in my class has heard me say this a thousand times about mixing your own greens and not using a tube green. If you use a tube green, I would suggest that you go in and you um, vary that green with other colors because uh, if you use a tube green and you add yellow ochre to it, you add burnt sienna to it, you add a, a deep black and ultramarine blue to it, and you get much, much more color to it, and it's not as monotonous and boring as, uh, now I like to have little edges, so this is from Whitney, he calls these interstices. Little, Say that again, he calls it what? Interstices. Oh, okay. little interstices. Little, like with legs you get little edges. <coughs> If you was brung up like me and you saw that in print, you'd say, interstices? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, you know, this is very loose and it's a, it's a, a demonstration. If it were done at home on this same paper, in this, on this same setup, it would be more detailed. But for the sake of doing the painting, for the sake of doing a painting that you can see. Now this would take maybe hours and hours of setting up to get the results that I want later because I don't want the color to be too, too glaring. But I want to say sunrise, sunset. You know, you take your pick. Is it morning or is it afternoon? Uh, Now this is going to make a fresh, clear, blue sky. And I'm going to take a little bit of a yellow and daringly put a little bit of a lemon yellow. So this, what I'm thinking here, this is some of you this is uh, Winsor Newton. I find when I use Winsor Newton yellow in a painting and we photograph it, the, the photography chooses to pick up the yellow. I don't know why, but it, it um, enhances the yellow. So I, I try not to use too much yellow. Then I'm going to try to get the sky a little bit cloudy. You know, sometimes people think that if, if you paint and it's cloudy, well, that, that means it's raining or some kind of bad weather or whatever. But, you know, a totally, totally blue sky is a little bit on the boring side. Okay, now, we're going to have water, but remember, this is going to be Louisiana water, and it's going to be kind of, uh, well, not sky blue. <laughs> Murky. <laughs> Louisiana. Uh, this is from my memories from by La Forge, which I painted at made wood um, many times with Edgar Whitney in a workshop at made wood. And made wood, as you know, is owned by the people who own Dixie Art, the Marshall family. And they're big into the arts. They're big into promoting the arts. They have an arts festival every spring, and they, they have ballet and all kinds of wonderful arts over there. And when I was there, it was privately owned by Mrs. Marshall. And uh, she told me that in 1972 or four, this is a long, long time ago, just to put a new roof on the house was like $50,000 because it's a huge plantation. So they turned it over into a, uh, a federal program to where now it, uh, it's a landmark, you know, so that they can receive some kind of federal funds for it. Do they still retain control of it? Do they what? Still retain control of it? Yeah, as far as I know, she and her sons, the uh, Marshall family, are very big into the arts. Now, all of this will take a lot of refinement. I just want to say this. Um, but I'm setting up um, just something to go by for the way that I paint, which is going to be in layers. And I'm going to paint the earth part kind of yellow, which is going to say sun shining down on it, and then I'll refine it with greens and browns and leaves and whatever. 
Now remember this is near St. Francis Villa. It's a, a, a little bit of a rolling landscape, which is very pretty. And then I'll, I'll work in a little bit. I'm, I'm crazy to be doing all this while everybody's looking. <laughs> but uh, I'm going to mix up my shadow color. Oh, thank you. My shadow color. You see the gorgeous, now this is some of yet. It's a, um, a blue that is like a, um, well, what kind of blue is that? A cerulean blue, um, a rose, and a yellow. Now, just the blue and the rose is going to give me a gorgeous shadow color. And I find purple to be kind of mysterious, or violet if you want to be fancy about it, to be a mysterious color. It adds a lot of mystery and it adds a lot of depth and shadow. Okay, so now, what, what's going on here? This needs a lot of work in the dark area. And this is the dark side of the tree, so we're going to develop the darks in this area. And the lights will follow on the lit side, which is going to be in this case. It's arbitrary, but it will be to the right. <coughs> now, I don't want to get too much ahead of myself. Um, I'm going to have a cabin or something back here. And I'm going to have a little shrimp boat or something over here. Well, this is all just out of my head and from memory because I painted scenes like this a thousand times. You know, it's kind of like I could do this in my sleep because I've, I've observed it and I've done it many, many a time. So the cabin lays low towards, towards the water and the cabin will have some really dark trees to pull it out. That will then give us a dark against the light, light against the dark, dark against the light. Okay. We all know that. And then we glaze over the yellow and we get our grassy lawn. And when that's sort of dry, then I can do some weeds and flowers and so forth. Um, and that is getting dirty. This is our sunlit lawn. Okay. And this is our water. My water's getting dirty. Um, what? Hon, you want to... Can somebody get me some fresh water? Yeah, yeah I need a couple of drinks. <coughs> now, my lit side of my trees, I, I want to try to remember every moment that where, where the light is coming from. In this case, it's arbitrary, but it comes from the from the left to the right. Then I want some really dark trees, really, really dark, surrounding my cabin because I want my cabin to show. So I put light against dark and dark against light. And you all know this. I don't have anything new to tell you that you haven't read in a good art book. I, I don't particularly have any wonderful methods of painting. But um, when, you, when you hold your darks against light, your light's against dark. When you have your light coming from one direction, you often get beautiful examples. I always call my boats Miss D because that's my sister's name. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I, I just, I've, I've called many a boat Miss D. Okay, now, the sky is fresh, and if I were going to really be doing it, I would add a lot to it. But the sky is fresh, and the little cabin is going to show here like that. And it's going to have God help me, but a little thing you know, trying not to be too trite. Mm -hmm. 
Now, as this begins to dry, I can begin to use a bit more uh, color and shading and all that good stuff, refinement, into the various areas as it begins to dry. As you can tell, I wet most of the paper, so it's kind of wet, and it will um, it will diffuse the paint, you know. The paint will run and diffuse and do strange things. But that's the beauty of watercolor. And if you're going to paint watercolor, to me, you should paint it like watercolor. You know, watercolor should not look like acrylics or gouache or anything but itself. What it looks like should be watercolor. And then if you take all of your messy colors and add them together, you get a lovely gray. And then you get some moss hanging down from the trees. And, you know, people make fun of the way my palettes look because they're never pristine. But when I call this, like, when you're making gumbo or some wonderful dish and you glaze your pan and you have all these wonderful flavors at the bottom, well, that's what you get when you mix a whole bunch of colors and we get these beautiful grays that don't do anything except, uh, thank you, somebody changed my water. Um, and then you see you can get your refinement along here as the paper dries. You can get, like right now I'm setting more light onto my greens. Now, this is a little bit more loose than I usually paint and a little bit colorful, but um, I'm a fan of Turner Thiborne's work, and he will be coming to my class soon to do a color demonstration for us. Turner Thiborne. Turner Thiborne. Turner Thiborne. Turner Thiborne. 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 Yeah, he, he, he asked me if he could come to my class. And that's wow. what he what is that going to be? I'm coming. <laughs> You'll have to let us know when. You got to see at the same time as mine, though. That's not good. Just when you're close over Well, he, he, asked, he asked me. Like a future. We met him at David's art store, and he was talking to my husband about acrylic paints, and he said, I was telling him about the people program, and he was telling me that. Is he going to join us? No, he wanted to come to my enough. class. No, he's not old enough. No, not to be <laughs> People program, you have to be at least 50. So none of you all are eligible for that. Nobody here is eligible. Oh, what's your I think Which day is he coming? May? May Everything Now, this is an oversimplification of my pen and ink sketch. It is... Uh, to talk about color, about shape, about design, about patterns, about um, composition. Everything is in thirds divided such that this tiny little boat will balance off this great big tree. And I could have more cabins in the background and I can have mm. a lot of things going on that I can't have now because it's kind of wet. Um, and as it dries, if I talk to you long enough and it would dry it would not. What kind of paper are you using? This is arches, um, a block of paper is arches, one, 140 sheets of watercolor paper. It's watercolor paper. Yeah. Now, I, I, would, I always do this. I always, you'll, you'll notice in everything I do, I always have little patches of weeds. And, and, and my front garden is like that. It has beautiful flowers in it, but it has patches of weeds. And that's my husband. He said, that looks kind of wild. I said, yeah, but I, I love the weeds, too. I love the tall grass because it bends, you know? It, it just does beautiful shapes like that. And uh, I, I love kind of oriental work, and that kind of reminds me of that. Now I'm doing sort of dry brush over uh, uh, the ultimate brush. And you see, I'm painting in layers. It's going to be layer after layer after layer after layer. And it's going to have a whole, whole lot more detail in it than this has. Now, I'll take a minute to introduce Pauline Lambert, who is my assistant. Pauline does stained glass. 
And she took my note papers and framed them uh -huh. in stained glass. Oh, cool. These can be ordered if you want to order them. Okay, Jackie, hold up These are my note papers that Pauline framed in uh, stained glass. She's with the People Program too. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. And it's clear glass on the other side, That's so you can see my copyright. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then my son, Greg, uh, he was storing my paintings in Baton Rouge because it's higher ground. And uh, he turned over this to me. And you all can take a look at it. It's a book of my paintings that oh. were left at his house. And uh, he photographed them and sent it off to New York and made a book. You all can take Isn't a look that at that. Nice? I like to paint on these little cards, like these thumbnails for friends, thank you notes, mm -hmm. uh, anniversary presents, or whatever, and just paint on these cards. And it can be acrylic, pen and ink, pencil, um, anything but oils, because oils would not do well on the paper. But, um, and send these as, as gift cards or as uh, thank you cards or whatever. Where do you get those? Any art store and the educator, library. and they're, they're just little creative cards. They're made by different companies. Strathmore has the ones that you can paint on in watercolor. They just call Some, watercolor cards. You get them, Michael. Uh, this is my card, in case anybody is interested. Um, the, these are for sale. These are $45. These are my note cards that I had published in 1972. They were sold in the Marriott and all kinds of gift stores in the quarter. Um, what else? The book. What? The book, the, book? the book can be ordered for $50. It, it's very expensive to reproduce a book like that with the color print. Jackie, what did you say about the stained glass? Somebody did that stained glass Pauline, for you? Pauline, my really assistant, oh, did it. Oh, you did it in the stained glass, glass class, class. which I'm not in no, anymore because I, I don't want to cut my fingers. She's a stained glass artist. You did it. You did it. Yeah, yeah I know she's right. wonderful. Pauline, you're wonderful. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 Your book is online to order, Jackie? Yeah, I have the key to it. Yeah, you can order it online. I think it's Pauline. Yeah, you can order it online. It's $49. Pauline, you're wonderful. Yeah, you can order it online. I think it's online. It's $45. And I can sell it to you for $50 oh, or whatever. But yeah, I have to give you the key to order it through Adorama. Yeah. Okay. Right and, and, and if you're interested in any of the Pauline's books, we'll take your name down for it. Um, but I did a series of uh, Pauline's books. Yeah. Yeah. And you can see this one. This one is for Pauline. Yeah. 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 Um, uh, uh, oh, this oh. is sh Oh, no, I thought it was. Shadows on this the is Shadows on the Tet. Yeah. The Shadows yeah. on the Tet. She's got, she's got uh, the cathedral. This one just has the Shadows on the Tet. Might have other things. Yeah, she has other things. Yeah, four here. different things. Yeah. Yeah. Look, she's got. Okay. Oh, that's okay. okay. Let's see. Of course, the cathedral she's got. Well, I made those for my church one day, and uh, they asked me if I would box them and sell them, and I sold hundreds of boxes of lives, I hope, anyway. Because you know, if anybody was ever my student, they know I'm crazy about getting variety in green. And so that um, it, there are two things that should be on my gravestone. One is don't copy, don't trace. <laughs> and the other is learn to draw your own set. Because if you learn to draw well, it's with you forever. And if you learn only to trace or use a projector, you're stuck with a bunch of machinery. And you don't want to do that as an artist. If you want to truly be an artist with your own expression, don't copy, don't trace. But if you must copy, if you copy from photographs or from other paintings, copy it, but use your own interpretation of it. And always, always give a credit. Now, somebody may do a portrait. Um, a lady did maybe 10 or 20 paintings of the lady with the earring by Vermeer. Mm -hmm. 
Well, uh, that's one of She sold them all, but she never made an attribute to the artist. And to me, that's a little tiny bit fraudulent to say that you designed this painting and signed your name to it when it's by a famous artist. You know, even though there's no copyright on it because the guys are dead forever. <laughs> but that's not the idea. The idea is that you claim to have done something that you really did not originate. And a lot of people so, do that. Well, a lot of people do that. And in the beginning, as a student, a lot of us depend on doing that. But we've got to outgrow that as if we want to really call ourselves artists. I mean, that's just my interpretation. You can say that I'm an old fuddy-duddy and you don't believe in that sort of thing. And you can, you know, but I truly believe that when I took art at Newcomb and we drew from life drawings and so forth, we made our way and, and you learn hmm? how to draw. And if you learn how to draw, you'll have that with you forever and ever and ever. The Impressionists painted until they couldn't see anymore, and yet they continued to paint. But they knew what they were doing from their backgrounds. And you know, all of us, well, I've been painting now for 60 years. Well, most of us don't have another 60 years to paint. Mm -hmm. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe. But, Jack, excuse me, but you, uh, you pretty much draw with your I like, to, I like to just express myself in my paints. And, um, you know, I'm not saying this is the right or the wrong way to paint. It's just how I paint. And I'm using these wonderful colors. Look at this purple. Oh, my gosh. That is so beautiful. And just to add a little mystery, a little shadow, a little depth into the painting. I may be too influenced by Terry Osborne, but he gets the most wonderful color in his work. If you've ever seen his posters for the jazz fest. If you go to the little frame shop on Lafayette Street, he's got two um, very recent painting by Osborne, and they are so colorful. Isn't that amazing how he does color? He is amazing. He is an amazing artist. He really is. And he's so nice. And he's so humble. He, he's just an amazing person. I, I just... I admire his work and I admire his attitude, you know, because he said, when I told him about what we do at People Program, he said, well, can I come to your class? I'm like, of course you can, you know. What, are you kidding me? And... Uh, so I'm going to use this purple on this bow because I never thought you could use cerulean blue and a rose and get this kind of a purple. I, I'm amazed. And that's uh, from the Sun Yay. And she's told me that that is what the Impressionists use. And this, this Arches watercolor paper, the company's been in business since 1492. Everybody's heard that video. Yeah. So that's a very long time to have been in business. Arches was started in 1492. The year 1492. That's when Arches was invented and started. Wow. Yeah. It's on the back of the. Uh, yeah. Well, it's because when you do watercolor, the paper does most of the work. The paper really does the work. If you use very good paper, good brushes, and good paint, you don't have to be a genius, you know. It, it, it does a lot for you. And it makes you want to try harder because you know it's going to last a thousand years. Oh, it's going to last a long, long time. I didn't know as a kid, just paint and stuff. I do a now this paper will use, you can use acrylics on this paper. You can even use oils on this paper if you have it to a, a substantial back. It's a wonderful paper. Now I'm going to use the purple to push the color back. You know, purple is a receding color and it, it gives you a lot more depth when you use purple in your background or violet, whichever, if you want the fancy word. I try not to use fancy words because I think it sounds elite, and I don't like to be an elitist, you know. I'm a, I'm a fudge this water because to the average person, water is blue. But in Louisiana, we know that 
water is all kinds of murky colors. So I'm going to fudge this blue just a little bit. Who's talking during the demonstration? <laughs> Shame on you. <laughs> the enforcer. The enforcer. Oh, well, Molly. <laughs> Molly. <laughs> Molly never stops talking. <laughs> Molly never stops talking. <laughs> and this is being... <laughs> Mo Molly, Molly can do anything she wants. And she knows it. And she knows it. Yes, she does. That wasn't permission. That was in a recognition. We want to know if you're going to frame that. Well, I'm going to let someone buy it if they want to buy it. Uh, it, it will it, it will sell for seventy five dollars if somebody wants to buy it, and I will finish it if somebody wants to buy it. I, I don't consider I consider it like a very beginning of a painting. And when she said I'll do it from start to finish, it does take more time because you need the paper to be a hundred percent dry and use some dry brush on the paper, which you know the dry brush is just using kind of formidable paint over dry paper and you get a beautiful effect from doing that. I can't go much farther than that with this being so wet. I can put a few more limbs on the tree, let me put a little more moss on the tree. But this is basically my motif. I love Louisiana bayous, I love Louisiana oak trees. Um, I, I love to paint scenes that I'm familiar with, like Bayou La Forge and Pierre <laughs> Parr and even our beautiful lakefront. And, um, you know, the pictures in the book will show just the kind of thing that I'm most interested in doing. I'll, I'll sign it for now, but it's not really finished. And it would, So you will work on it for more than you would take it a little further off? Well, I, I would because right now it's, um, it's too wet to really well, work on it. It's kind of wet. So, um, but I'll tell you, um, when I was in the National Gallery, and there were all paintings all over the place, beautiful all paintings, but the one that stood out, uh, Winslow Homer, with the watercolors, because you get the luminosity of the white paper with the luminosity of the acrylic color, which is using the color and sheer color. And the sun of yay, mostly everything I did was with sun of yay, and I'm not speaking for sun of yay, it's just that I'm very impressed with that as a, as a medium. It's made with honey, it's very rich and thick, and supposedly we're thinking it's used and it's made in the so that's all that I can offer you today, and I will finish the work for some of these interesting Thank you, Gary. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.